Hello everyone, welcome back to my U.S. National Park tier list series. This video is the second installation in a three-part series. Watching the first part is not required in order to watch this video. However, that video does provide some context into my thought process when analyzing each park. If you haven't seen that video yet, these were the parks that I covered, and these were their placements in the tier list. In this video, I will be covering my C and B tier national parks. This video will cover many more parks than the last video, meaning that I might gloss over some parks. If you like this series and want to see similar content in the future, be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Any little bit of contribution means a lot to me. With that being said, let's just get straight into this video, starting with the C tiers. White Sand Dunes National Park in New Mexico. If you're wondering why I put this as our first C tier, that is because I consider it a borderline C tier park. Similar to Hot Springs in the last video, borderline in this context means that it is very, very, very close to being a tier below. In this case, the reason why I would probably put it deep here is because you have to do a little thinking, okay? Imagine yourself in the desert, surrounded by white sand with the sun beaming down above you, okay? What does that mean? I'll tell you. Eye damage! You know? Damage to the retina is... It's gonna hurt! And the reason why I wouldn't put it D tier is because, I mean, it's big, it's a pretty cool desert landscape, so I can't put it in D tier just because of eye damage. Like, who even cares about eye damage anyways? Like, come on! <laughs> Wind Cave National Park in South Dakota. Out of the three major cave national parks in the United States, this one is by far the worst. The stuff above the cave is pretty boring. The stuff inside of the cave is pretty boring. I consider it C tier because, I mean, a cave is still pretty cool compared to, like, one hot spring. <laughs> <clears throat> so, yeah, wind cave, C tier. Our next C tier is... Voyagers National Park in Minnesota is great if you love the woods. However, if you like literally anything else, it's kind of lame. C tier. Our next national park is... Isle Royale in Michigan is literally the same park as Voyagers. Except this time, it's on an island. Wow! C tier. Our next C tier is... Theodore Roosevelt National Park in North Dakota is great if you like planes. However, if you like literally anything else, this park may not be for you. C tier. Our next C tier is... Pinnacles National Park in California. They have condors and pinnacles. Other than that, it's pretty mid. C tier. Our next C tier park is... Acadia National Park in Maine is honestly not even that bad of a park. I just think that there's other parks that do it better. That's it. C tier. Our next national park is... New River Gorge in West Virginia. The country's newest national park, released in 2021. Uh, other than the, like, fact that it's the newest national park and the first national park in West Virginia, I don't have much else to say about this park. C tier. Our next C tier. Joshua Tree National Park in California. Trees. At least this time, the trees are alive, unlike the other national park. T. C tier. Our next national park is... 
Great Basin National Park in Nevada. I am mostly indifferent about this park. However, I do think it's pretty cool that there's just r this random mountain in the middle of the Nevada desert that has a glacier on it. That's pretty cool. Other than that, still a C tier. Our next national park is... Congaree National Park in South Carolina. This park is honestly a pretty good national park considering the fact that it's protecting like a very rare ecosystem in the Carolinas. My only real criticism is that it's just really small. Unfortunately, that criticism still leaves it as a C tier. Our next national park is... Channel Islands National Park in California. There's a little interesting ecosystem on the islands that's different from the ecosystem on the mainland, which is honestly pretty cool. Other than that, the islands are just kind of boring, I guess. Mm. C tier. Our next C tier park is... Black Canyon and Gunson in Colorado. I'm not gonna lie, this is one of the most forgettable national parks in the country. Pretty cool, but it's so gosh diggity darn forgettable, dude. C tier. Our next C tier park is SSSSSS. Canyonlands and Capitol Reef National Parks in Utah. The reason why I'm combining both of these national parks into one segment is because, I mean, they're basically the same park. Like, cool landscape, cool colors, cool all around. While I believe that individually both parks have their charm to them, I believe that they are so similar to each other and so close to each other that having them be their own parks is kind of unjustified. So with that being said, I think a really good improvement that you can make to both parks is just to combine them with the uh, space in between them, since that space is virtually uninhabited. But I th think that both parks deserve a C tier. Our next C tier is... Grand Teton National Park in Wyoming. A lot of you may see this as a hot take, but in my opinion, I think it's a cold take. Because it's a very beautiful park, but just like Canyonlands and Capitol Reef, it is so close to another national park, that other national park being the GOAT Yellowstone, did. But just like in Capitol Reef and Canyonlands, I don't really see how it can be unique enough to be its own national park. With that being said, I think that it's C tier. It's your boy, Patrick. Hope you dig in the video so far. Guess what? Our next C tier is... Kenai Fjords National Park in Alaska. Or is it Fjords? Fjords? V v v whatever it's called. I would consider Kenai Fjords to be a high borderline park, which means that I would want to put it in B tier. However, the thing that is preventing it from being in B tier is not the park itself. In my opinion, the park is perfectly fine. It's just the fact that it has so many similarities to other parks in Alaska that I cannot justify it being in B tier, and thus, I will have to put it in C tier. Biscayne National Park in Florida. Just so you guys know, this is going to be our final C tier park. And similar to Can I Blah Doors in the last part, this park is very close to being a B tier. However, I cannot put it in B tier because of one major problem that I have with it. That is that it is terrifyingly close to Miami. That is problematic because Miami is notable for producing a lot of physical and chemical pollution. Well, I don't think that there's like heaps of trash going into Biscayan because of the currents, I do believe that there is still some pollution entering the ecosystem that could alter food chains, uh, hurt animals, hurt plant life, and so it's just not a very good situation. That's on top of coral degradation and seagrass degradation. There's a lot of problems with this national park. However, I can't put it any lower than where it is right now because of the, like, the potential with this national park. It is the only national park that highlights the sea, besides dry tortugas, but that's something else. It is mostly ocean, 
and it's like that makes it special. I really want to put in B tier, but I just can't. So as of right now, it could change, but as of right now, it is a C tier. Crater Lake National Park in Oregon. Honestly, this is a good park. It has a cool atmosphere, and I like the fact that it has like this weird crater lake. You know, it's a cool park. B tier. Katmai National Park in Alaska is a fantastic park if you like grizzly bears and nature in general. If you don't like that, then, I mean, it'll still be pretty cool. B tier. Lake Clark National Park, also in Alaska, is basically the same as Katmai, except a little more forgettable. I can't put it any lower than Katmai because, I mean, it's still pretty cool. So if you go here, you're going to have a pretty good time, I think. But still isn't special enough to put it any higher than where it is right now. So, solid B tier. Carlsbad Caverns National Park in New Mexico. Out of the three cave national parks in the United States, this one is pretty cool. Despite not being the biggest or most fascinating cave in the United States, Carlsbad Caverns is unique because it hosts many varieties of bats within its borders. B tier. Guadalupe Mountains National Park in Texas is cool because it includes Texas's highest point and it also includes a lot of diversity in the ecosystem. For that reason, I will give it a B tier. Saguaro National Park in Arizona is a really cool park because I feel like it embodies the ideal American desert with its saguaro cactuses that are the tallest cactuses in the Americas. It's a really iconic park that I think defines what it means to be a desert. My only major gripe with saguaro is that it split up by the city of Tucson, Arizona. So if you can find some way to combine the landscapes, probably by, you know, nuking <laughs> Tucson, Arizona, I think this park could be a little higher. But other than that, B tier. North Cascades National Park in Washington. You know, this park is pretty cool. I don't really have a lot to say about it. It's pretty cool. Mountains are cool. The landscape is cool. The execution is cool. It's just kind of forgettable, I guess. Oh well. B tier. End Dunes National Park in Colorado was originally supposed to be a C tier, but I personally couldn't justify it being C tier, so I decided to move it up a tier. That's mostly just because it has a lot of variance in its landscape, and it's just a pretty well-rounded park. That being said, I will gladly place it in a B tier. Dry Tortugas National Park in Florida, and Mesa Verde National Park in Colorado. Honestly, both of these parks are really good. They both combine man-made structures with nature in a very effective manner. Both parts are B tier. Le San Volcanic National Park in California. I'm gonna be straight up, this park just wants to be a Yellowstone. It wants to be Yellowstone so badly. Like, there's hot springs, there's geysers. It just wants to be Yellowstone. But, unfortunately, it isn't. That doesn't mean it's bad, just means that it isn't Yellowstone. That's all I have to say. For Lasan Volcanic, B tier. Big Bend National Park in Texas. Honestly, I don't really have a lot of bad things to say about this park. It's fantastic. Park, it's apparently one of the best parts for bird watching. So if you like birds, then you can go there. It's just a it's good overall, nice, humble, wholesome park. B tier. Badlands National Park in South Dakota. Believe it or not, the name Badlands doesn't just refer to this national park. It refers to any terrain that resembles Badlands National Park. This national park literally coined the term that would describe many different landscapes throughout the world. Pretty phenomenal. B tier. 
Virgin Islands National Park in Virgin Islands, and American Samoa in American Samoa. Both of these parks are basically the same. They're just pretty far apart, which is pretty interesting. B tier for both. Bryce Canyon National Park in Utah. I don't really have many bad things to say about it. It's just a pretty amazing canyon-esque national park. Uh, it stands out for being pretty unique. So good on you, Bryce Canyon. You get a B tier. Glacier National Park in Montana. You probably know this park. I know this park. I mean, I should know this park. However, you should not get this park confused with Glacier Bay National Park in Alaska. Anyways, Glacier National Park. Everyone knows it. Everyone loves it. You gotta go fast, otherwise all the glaciers are gonna be gone because of stupid global warming. It's just a good park. I like it. Hopefully you like it. B tier. You thought I was gonna say Glacier Bay, didn't you? But I caught you, I caught you! <clears throat> Arches National Park in Utah. A very iconic park. Everyone knows this park. Everyone loves this park, me included. I like it a lot, but I can't put it into A tiers. I'm sorry. Don't hate me. It, or you can hate me if you want, but don't hate me, please. But Arches, it's a good park. I like it a lot. Easy B tier. Speaking of our next and final Easy B tier, we have... Mount Rainier National Park in Washington State. Trust me when I say that out of all of the borderline national parks, this one is the closest to being upgraded. After careful consideration, though, I have decided to put Rainier in the B tier. I have made this decision because I believe that Mount Rainier National Park doesn't quite reach the qualifications necessary for it to be an A tier. A tier parks, under my judgment system, have high amounts of variability. While Mount Rainier is a special park, it is the highest point in Washington after all, it does not have the variety to justify it landing in A tier. I am confident that a trip to Mount Rainier would likely change my perspective and convince me to raise it to A tier. I have to put it in B tier. Sorry to all of my Washington viewers, you are welcome to uh, crucify me I guess. That concludes the second part of my U.S. National Park tier list. In the next episode, I will be going over my A and S tier national park. In addition to that, I will be giving one special park the designation of my personal favorite U.S. National Park. If you want to see what park that is, be sure to subscribe to the channel in order to catch it when it drops. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope to see you next time. Bye bye!